Wise Guys Cooking is brought to you by Everson Spice. As the world has Here's Frankie. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the desert's premier entertainer, Frank DeSalvo. What a day this has been. <laughs> what a rare mood I'm in. <laughs> well, it's almost like being in love. Oh, when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's the oh, that's a morning. These little town blues. Oh. Where old Lemma be? Teddy bear. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. We've got a great show for you tonight. But, you know, I can't remember who's on it, but I know it's a great show. So stick around. We'll be right back. No reasonable offer refused. That's our promise here at J.R. Thomas Golf Cars. Our biggest blowout sale on all pre-owned vehicles. This is a limited time offer. And sale is over in 60 days. My father, Bobby Thomas, opened up electric car distributors in 1960. I joined him in 1977, where I was groomed to run and operate a trusted golf car business. Come in now for our big blowout sale here at J.R. Thomas Golf Cars in Rancho Mirai. As my father always said, take care of your customers or someone else will. Welcome to Wise Guys Cooking. I'm Rebecca Romano, and today's most special guest is Tony Pomponio. Hey, Rebecca. Hello. I love it. Hey, you said that my name is correct. I love it. It's a beautiful thing. I'm glad you're here today. Thank you so much. Gracias tante. I love the people. You know that. I know that. So today we're going to be doing something wonderful. We're making um, bruschetta. Uh, excuse me. I got to interrupt you one moment. It's bruschetta. Yes. Bruschetta. One it more is time. Bruschetta. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so today we're making bruschetta. Basically, we're gonna introduce our ingredients, and what we have today is extra virgin olive oil, balsamic, a red onion, diced, garlic cloves, which we've pre-prepped so that we can make this a little bit more simple, Parmesan cheese, uh. and tomatoes. I did want to take a moment and talk about the tomato. The tomato, you can pre prepare a number of ways, and that really just depends on what you're going for. You can dice your tomato, slice your tomato, or you can um, smash your tomato. It really just depends on what the, the look you're going for is. I always think dicing is just the way to go. How beautiful is that? So this is what you prefer, huh? This is what I prefer. Ah, bellezza, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Um, we're gonna have bread. You know, the thing most important with the bread is the bread has got to be nice and soft inside and the crusty on the outside. That's going to be more. the beautiful thing. I could not agree yeah. more. Basil, you know, whenever we're cooking, we have to have a fresh herb. Oh. It's the only way. Salt and pepper. You're going to need a butcher's knife, a serrated knife, and a fork and a spoon just for stirring, getting everything put together. Tutto bene. All right, I will just uh, do a quick uh, cut on this tomato here just to give our audience members an insight as to what I've done today. So just a, a little slice. And you're gonna take one slice and you can do it a number of ways, but slices across. Oh, this is very good, very good. That's it. Very nice. Wasn't that easy? Bella, bella, bella. It's una cosa bella. It's a beautiful thing to watch a chef uh, working. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now we're going to do um, the most important thing is timing. So we're going to put our bread in the oven. It's going to go for about 10 minutes max, depending upon this, the strength of your oven. We did seven minutes because we have a pretty strong oven. There's two things you can do. You can pre-prep the bread yeah. by slicing it at an angle. Serrated knife. So a thick piece angled like this. 
Beautiful. Noticing about an inch thick. Very nice. You need that to absorb the oil, the balsamic, the tomato juice, all of those things. So we've prepared about six of those, which I've already cooked in the oven. Um, if you want to put on your mitts and get those out for me, that'd be wonderful. Molto piacere. Thank you, darling. Beautiful. Where would you like? Let's go ahead and sit them over here. Oh, okay. So there's many ways that you can handle the bread. You can put the oil on before it goes in. You can mix your oil with your garlic, stir it up and do it this way, or you can do what we're gonna do today. Leave the bread, I like it a little bit crispy. You can see that it's still soft in the middle. It has a nice texture. And we're gonna put the ingredients all together. First thing we're gonna do is start with our tomatoes. This is a nice, this is like a, the portion of control, huh? That's it. That's Cabito, exactly Cabito, it. understand. Then we'll take our garlic. Garlic. You can uh, use a ton of garlic, you can use a little bit of garlic. The more the better. The more the better. I couldn't agree more. Yes. Red onion. I used about a quarter of a red onion. Yeah. I like to use a lot of red onion. Yeah, I think it's that a, it's a nice flavor. You can do about three tablespoons of olive oil. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Is that beautiful? beautiful? Oh my lord. I could feel it in my heart. Balsamic, you're just gonna use about that much, maybe two, max, depending. And then we cannot forget the basil leaves. So fresh basil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack the basil and then I'm gonna roll the basil like this. Like a, like a Cuban cigar, perhaps. And then I'm gonna cut the basil at an angle, really thin, thin slices. You like that? You do a very nice job. Thank you. Yeah, very professional. I like these things. Thank you so much. And we're just going to sprinkle it around. Look at how beautiful these colors are. You know, I'm going to tell you one thing. I could eat that just like this. You could. You know, you maybe could. I lose a little bit of the panza, you know. But no. the bread, you need the bread. It's very important. It's very <laughs> important. Um, almost as important as the flavor of salt and pepper. Hmm. Let's go ahead and do, I'm going to do a pinch of salt but it's gonna be a pretty heavy pit pinch, which I would refer to as a he heaping pinch. Okay. And then we're gonna do a light pinch of pepper. Look at how colorful that is. Oh, a little boy. bit of stirring. There's a number of things that you can do. If you like a little bit of spice, you can add some chili peppers. If you um, like a little bit more of a garlic flavor, you can use the Everson spice. Ah, the number one spice in my kitchen and cabinet. The number one spice in my kitchen. Oh, I love it. Well. I love it. Very good quality product. So here we go. Let's just use a teeny bit. Make sure you're coating the top. Very nice. Beautiful. Very nice. Once you've coated the top, you're good to go. Now we're stirring. I mean, it's amazing how easy this is. And what's really wonderful about it is if you're in a hurry and you have a party to go to, you can't show up empty handed, no. but you don't want them to think that you forgot. So you wanna make sure that you do something nice. There's been many a times, and now I will be exposed. If I've shown up with this dish, you know that I needed to put something together very quickly. Uh, you can uh, never go over to somebody's house uh, with uh, nothing in your hands. That's not the Italian way. No. No. We would never do that. No, it's uh, very embarrassing. It is very embarrassing. Yeah. So now we're gonna do the fun part, which is the decorating. If you could please hand me that white dish. Thank you. When you're working with colors as beautiful as these tomatoes are, I think it looks really nice against a white dish. So if you can have something like this on call at your home, it saves the day cannoli, sprinkling chocolate. Yeah. So we gotta buy some of these things over here. I think so, it's anywhere, you can get them anywhere. Good idea. I'll take four pieces of bread, please. Thank you, You're so wonderful. You're just gonna take a little bit of this sauce here. And don't worry about it looking a little messy because this is one of those dishes that you want to be falling everywhere. That's what adds the flavor and color and just really gives it that extra oh, this power. Is, this is a beautiful, a molto bello, beautiful. Isn't that nice? Looking good. 
And if you want to add that little extra bit of decorating, you're going to take one of your ingredients, and that, this really applies to anything that you're cooking. If you want to give it that extra oomph, make sure that you're using an ingredient that you've cooked with in that dish. Yes. So we prepped with basil. So we're going to take the basil leaves, we're just going to take two, and we're going to do the rolling motion like we did before, and we're going to slice them at an angle. Be careful at home when you do this because uh, you got to wash the fingers. It's so true. Yes. And we're pulling the basil across like this. Is that beautiful or oh, what? Oh, my lord. There you go. Now, the final part of this recipe, which is something that we use in pretty much everything, is going to be our cheese. Yes. This is what makes it beautiful. And you can kind of shred it around. There you go. This uh, plate is, um, uh, uh, it's uh, like a photo, a beautiful photo. Thank you. Yes. And anybody can do this. If you want to get your children excited about cooking, this is a great way to start. Cheers. Salute. Salute. Mm. Oh, mm. Delicioso. Delicious. Mm. Mm. Oh. Malone. Mm. Oh my I'm so happy I'm here today because I am, I am uh, excited about uh, the, the bruschetta. It's a uh, fantastico, delicioso. Beautiful job, Rebecca. Thank you so much, Tony. This is bruschetta, and we are wise guys cooking. Thank you. Totally Johnny. We are wise guys are cooking. Ciao. Welcome to Wise Guys Cooking. I'm Rebecca Romano, and this is my uncle Frank. When you're Italian, everybody's your uncle. Uh, all true. the men in your life are your uncles, but he actually yeah. is my uncle, so it's nice to have you here. Today, we're gonna be doing, yeah, he doesn't have a lot of cooking experience, so I wanted to tr uh, <laughs> teach something that you could entertain your guests, knock their socks off, and they'd have no clue you didn't know what you were doing in the kitchen. And it is the peach bellini, because we like oh, to keep it right. real Italian. Exactly, and it doesn't take a lot of time. No, it takes no time no. at all. Uh, what you're going to need, though, is uh, Prosecco, peaches. Peaches. And you can, I put the strawberries here because you can substitute peaches for strawberry, just in case you want to have okay. a variety. Yeah. That's fine. That's um, fine. You're going to need a little bit of vanilla. Vanilla. And sugar. The sugar. Could you hand oh, me that sugar, okay. please? Yeah. Thank you. Sugar, that's so good. Sugar. Okay, so basically what you're gonna do is you have two options for peaches. You could use fresh peaches, mm -hmm. which are currently not in season, or frozen peaches. Absolutely, yes. That yes. have already been skinned. Yeah. So. Okay, mm -hmm. we can do that, we can do that. Skinning is good. Skinning is good. Mm -hmm. And uh, once our water comes to a boil, which it already has here, we're gonna remove the lid. Uh -huh. Always being very careful. Safety first. Safety curves. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a few peaches in here. You can um, use as much as you'd like. About five to six peaches are going to make enough for about 30 guests. Maybe oh. maybe a little bit more. You know, Italians are already knock on the door and 30 people come in two seconds. Yeah, that's, that's the, okay. That's, that's okay. the starting point. Yeah. yeah. So once you've got your peaches uh, boiling, that's going to take about five minutes five to minutes. get going. Right. We put the lid on yeah, to nothing, nothing. hold the heat in. Yep. In the meantime, we like to stay active in the kitchen, never, yep. never um, resting because timing is everything. So I'm going to grab a peach and I'm going to just chop Watch it up your here, finger. always. And the mm. reason I'm chopping that up is yeah. because I'm going to add it to the um, glass when we're all that's done. That's so good. That's so good. Thank you. A little bit about my Uncle Frank. He bought me my first set of knives. I did, yeah, I oh, did. Oh, no, it was, it was handed down. That's right. What, That's we, don't, we don't have new knives. We don't These are them. from generation to generation. Yeah. All the cooks, and we do from one to the other. Now you got them. They're probably 200 years old. I should have taken them. I should have sold them. No, I don't, I don't think so. Those. I want to give them to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Frank. Now, to get to the fun part. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our peaches and once they're done boiling right? and we're going to throw Perfect. them in here. Yep. This is a, um, a lighter version of the recipe. So Be careful. It's hot. Be careful. Absolutely. 
This puree is going to be very, very fine puree mm. um, because we're going to add a few slices of peach to the oh, glass, yeah. so we're not going to need Sounds it. Sounds good. Sounds good. Dash of vanilla. Just a dash. Oh, that is a dash. That's All right. <laughs> and the fun part, the sugar. A lot of sugar, yes. Three tablespoons to be exact. You're so technical. Well, you have to be when cooking. Well, Italians, they don't, you know, a little shopped here, a little shopped there, but it's okay, it's a good. It's all about a little shot and it's a little all. shot. <laughs> How do you do so much? You, you, so, you're so young. How do you know so much well, at your age? I'm, I'm not so young. I'm, I'm younger than you. Oh, I need a question. And you blame. See how long that took? Yeah, two seconds. What would you say, two that's seconds? That's okay. Well, five seconds. All right, our guests are going to be arriving in 30 minutes. Fine, we're ready for them. It's perfect because you need 30 minutes for this to cool down. I'm going to smell. I'm going to smell. All right, smell that. Oh, fabulous. Mm, it's fabulous. beautiful. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Great, great, great. great. <laughs> All right, here's the fun part. We're gonna grab, we've, uh, we've been cooling our peaches. Peaches. And we're gonna grab that out of the fridge. Would you grab that out of the sure. fridge? It's on the bottom shelf. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, so here's good. our puree. If you have a nice serving dish, that always makes the difference. You know, Ooh. you put your desired amount. Ooh. Prosecco is very bubbly, so you have to be careful when you're pouring it so as to not bubble over, but I really don't mind it when it We happens. don't care. Yeah. Just put it on. The only problem is you waste and then you get to, <laughs> you get to consume less. Ah, Prosecco. Magnificent. Okay. Good. You got a good hand. We'll start Nice that. and steady. We'll start here. Oh, that looks good. So Isn't good. Huh? Yeah. So you're going to need a stir, uh, stirring stick. A lot of people have a bar stir, which is a long spoon, but we don't have that, so we're going to use a chopstick. A which Chinese most, chop, yeah, exactly. right. Exactly, yeah, most yeah. people have that in their kitchen. That's good. yep. I do, I do. I do, absolutely. And now the fun part. Throw a few peaches in there. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. Sounds good, sounds good. I'm Rebecca Romano, and this is Wise right. Guys Cooking. Salut! I shall lose. Yeah. of you, me, and Sicily, and on this episode, we're going to make sugu, and at the end, a little bit of a healthy spaghetti. But first, Alfred, what exactly is sugu? This recipe comes from Tre Castagni, my grandparents' ancestral home. Essentially, it's a regular tomato sauce, but you can put meat in it. You can put meatballs, you can put sausage, you can put red meat, you can put uh, pork chops, you can put ribs, you can put everything except the, the kitchen, kitchen sink. sink. <laughs> okay, now remember, this is an art kitchen. We're not professional cooks, but we do have fun. Enjoy. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is the sauce, right, Alfred? What goes in it? Well, what we're going to do is we're just putting in right now the uh, garlic and then. Of course, you all have a little first. Better just wait until the, uh, the garlic uh, starts to crisp up a little bit in terms of a uh, little bit of uh, bubbling over there with the oil. And then we're going to get our posata. Some people don't use posata, some people use crushed tomatoes, canned tomatoes. There's a million different things to use, but I prefer to use the posata. It's 
drop the glue in. You don't want to burn the garlic, got to keep an eye on it, right? Yeah, you just want to release it, just release the flavor. And I'm putting in some water right now. Get all the goodness out of the pachata. Now, some people put red wine, right? I think your mom used to put red wine in it, right? Yes, and a lot of Sicilian people use red wine, too. And sometimes I use red wine, but today I'm not using it. This is like a simple sauce. Okay, so we added in a little bit of oregano, fresh oregano from Kanikati, a little bit of sugar to cut the acid, and now goes the tomato paste. Okay, time to make the meatballs, Alfred. Okay, what we have over here is good quality ground pork, good quality ground beef. We tried to find the best we could. Now we're going to put some salt in there, about a level teaspoon, some black pepper, the same amount. I put a little bit more on the uh, breadcrumbs. In just one second, you're going to see why. I put in a good bunch full of parsley. You'll see why on that. And to bind this all, we're going to put in a couple of eggs. That's going to bind the whole thing up. Now, other people, you know, some people will even put in grated cheese here. But I'm not going to put in grated cheese, but that's an option that you could have. Oh, my favorite part. This is actually so therapeutic. Mixing it all together. And you have to make sure you mix it all really, really well. This is so, so fun. <laughs> okay. All right, now we're going to make the meatballs. Now, this is also an art. Make them this big. What do you think? Kind of big, huh? Squeeze it together like a, like, snow, like a snowball. Like a snowball. Okay, now, now roll it. Out <laughs> but you have to roll it. You have to roll it, too. There you go. Squeeze it and roll it. Okay. One. That looks pretty good. Pretty good, mm -hmm. Esther. It's going to swim in that sauce, and it's going to... Well, first we're going to brown it, but you're right. Some people, by the way, put the meatball, did you know that, right into the sauce without even browning it, but we're from the browning school of thought. <laughs> Coming along pretty good here. Okay. Now, while well, that's uh, cooking, we're going to brown up, brown up the sausages, which, by the way, we have... Uh, what do they have? They have uh, cheese, tomatoes, and pasta in them. And then we put them in there. Sausage is looking ready. Yep, uh, it's been pot cooking for about uh, 20 minutes. Got most of the fat out of it, too, which is a good thing. And the flame is medium, so you don't want to, you know, burn them. Because they're going to be cooking in the sauce for a good couple hours, so they're just enough to stay firm. And now they're going to disappear. The flavors will melt together with the. Uh, you know, with the sauce, and then the last thing you put into the smaller will be the meatballs. And then we're just going to let these guys cook up a bit and see what happens. Now we're browning up the meatballs. Not cooking them all the way, just browning them. Meanwhile, the sausage is in there, cooking nicely. Ooh, that smells yum. Doing good, Alfred. Yep. Okay, so there's several ways of making the meatballs and the sausage. We can brown them or put them in the oven for a little bit. Or some people even put it in raw right into the sauce and let it cook there. These guys okay. look like they're nice and brown and ready to go for a swim, right, Al? I think so. Let's put this first batch in. This is numbers 1 to 25. Uh, 45 we're making. And remember, the recipes are a little bit smaller than normal because we're having a bunch of people in the house. So, they're about half cooked right now, and like I said to you, they've got to kind of swim in the sauce for a good two hours until that sauce thickens up nicely. And then from that, Hasugu is made. The moment of truth. Look at that. The finished product with a little bit of parmesan on it. So, Alfred? Well, Esther, it's been stewing for two hours. We have so, let's see how it tastes. And the sauce. You know, we're going to serve this with not, not, with, not with any pasta. We're serving this with uh, crusty bread so they can, you know, kind of like eat and enjoy it. Mm. 
it's really good. I mean, on a scale of 1 to 10, I don't want to say it's a 10, but legitimately, it's a 10. Bravo. You see how the sugu sticks to the, sticks to the uh, sausage, too? That's what you want because it's nice and thick. Now, just imagine if I had a nice chunk of bread in my hand over here. I think it's going to be a hit, Esther. I really do. I think uh, folks that are coming over our house are going to enjoy this this weekend. I hope. Okay. Like I always do when I really like something. To the modest romance, a new life, a new attitude. And a moment set a lose. In a matter of no time at all. You can win with your back to the wall. With a card of the river, your aces. Home run of the bases. In a moment, though you're desperate and down. In a moment, it can all turn around. It's a fact I've known to be true. From the moment I saw you. And the magic that it makes In a moment, just a casual glance Changes slowly to the maddest romance A new life, a new attitude In a moment, set or lose In a matter of no time at all You can win with your back to the wall With a card of the river, your aces Home run a fact I've known to be true from the moment I saw you. 